Hey guys, we're here in Connecticut. We're gonna be doing a little private event for a set of VIP clients. But before we do that, we're gonna stop by one of my clients' house who is an obsessive compulsive collector of everything to include watches, knives, art, cars, and everything else. We're gonna show you a little bit of that, so stay tuned. This is it. Guys, if you're enjoying our content, I ask you to please hit the like button. Also, if you're watching this and not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. And last but not least, let us know what you like and let us know what you want more of. Let's get back to the video. So this is your section of the garage, basically? Yeah, all, yeah, and over there. Uh, dumb question. Did you have to like pay for all these spots? Of course you did. All right. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite cars. Mm -hmm. It's Alex's dream car. The V10 R8 is definitely one of my gold cars, but after I get the house. This is factory. SL65A, Black Series. Oh, 65 Black Series, holy shit. This say, this thing will blow blow the eardrums out of your ear. Yeah. What do you say this is, Adrian? It's a Bugatti. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, f me. That's a Bugatti. Yeah. 16.4 liter engine. When eight cylinders is enough, you double it. <laughs> That's insane. Let's see. One way to find out. Oh, 599. Oh, 599. That's a GTO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. Is that you, Adrian? Yes. This, this is, is you, huh? This is it. I got something even better. Hold on, hold on. He's not, he's not ready. Let me see her ass real quick. He's not ready. Damn! This is, this yeah, is, I'm ready. come on, this is. Okay, this is my dream car. <laughs> oh, man. This is my, this is, this is my dream car. Right here. Color. This is, this is the one. Like, I'm going to keep stuttering like I'm, there's no This wrong. is it, yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is, this is it. This is That's a, literally his dream this car. This is the one. We'll go out late. We'll take a ride. Yes? <laughs> look at look at no, kids. Look the, at him. I'm like a kid. This is the one. Porsche 918. I am in love. I've been on record many times saying how this is my dream car. Okay, I just made a trade. A TDF for this. <laughs> I just made it. a trade. Holy shit, dude. No window. Oh my god. I have never seen this before. I'm gonna come. Now that we're done with the cars, we're gonna go upstairs to check out the rest. This is like sensory overload right now. The beautiful part about all this stuff is that it's money in the bank. A lot of the stuff is money in the bank and then some. So your main uh, concentration okay. in terms of art, what would you say it would be? 20th century Warhol. That's a real Sick. Warhol? Yeah. Sick. So this is, it's a Picasso, but nobody can confirm or deny. Yeah, exactly. What do you mean? You didn't give it to like any like yeah, the, they, nobody. Nobody can do. somehow you see this. Yeah. It throws everybody off. But that could have been done after. You know, I don't know. And let's just like, let's pretend it is. It is. <laughs> Picasso, Damien Hirsch, Chagall, just to name a few. Miro. I mean, the art collection was absolutely amazing. But now let's look at some collectible shotguns, which is near and dear to my heart, which are a work of its art on its own. Look at this case. Is that a cool? It's uh, polycarbonate case. Well, is this one of those uh, cabinet? cabinets? Cabinet. Is it, it may be cabinet. I have a bunch. Hey, real quick, for those that don't understand what I'm looking at in terms Pretty of cool. craftsmanship, I mean, like engraved. engraved it's just it's just master filled. master engravers that right. just engraved and gold filled. And gold filled. I mean, this is insanity. Price wise, average shotgun from them that's engraved. I mean, we're talking twenty thousand. Oh, no, no, no. Fifties, nineties, hundred. I mean, I thought I, I thought I collected this. Is some this is like the top. Italian top top guy. This is an older one. I mean, I mean, this is the stuff that fetches all the money in auctions. It's it's and and really a lot of the times, especially on the older stuff, you're paying for the engraver. In terms of hours, yeah. on something like this, what do you figure in terms of hours? Hundreds. It's I mean, it's hundreds of hours of work. The engraving. Yeah. And of course, here come watches, lots of watches. All right, so shit, I don't even know where to start. Let's start here. This is just, I mean, look at the condition of this thing. It's insane. It's new. 20 years ago. It's new. Look at this. Not polished, nothing. This is just- Original patina left on the watch. Look at that. That is incredible. So one of the things that, as I'm looking at a collection, the very first, you know, we, we tend to, as watch dealers, it's like, you know, if you're a guy that sells shoes, you're gonna judge somebody by their pair of shoes. And if you're a guy that sells watches, you're gonna look at the person's watch. But when you're looking at a watch collection, the very first thing that I absolutely love is the diversity in the collection. You're gonna find a Swatch watch next to, you know, a million dollar Daytona, which is 
Absolutely amazing. Look that how just shows this, this uh, Daytona's. This is like as if it just came out of the store. Just a regular Saint Anthony 16520 Zenith. I mean, it's just like look at that. I mean, it's just perfect. The moment of silence that we just had. Yeah, that was for the 3711 white gold. I've been doing this 20 years. This is the second time ever I've seen one physically. You know how rare that is? I know how rare it is, yeah. All right. Yeah. It's just all on the same page. I had to take a second look at it because I've only seen two in person, 37 and white goals. You know, obviously they made a new 5811 now, right? Right. Which is which is a bigger case. I'm like, what is this? Yeah, 37. For a second, I, when he when he handed it over, I thought it was a 5811, but then nah, I realized yeah, it's, no, not. it's not. I'm gonna slide over and I'm gonna show some stuff that has a cool factor. And Paddock pocket watches are probably some of the most underrated collectibles out there today because a pocket watch sort of lost its appeal in terms of use, usability per se, right? It's not as useful anymore. People don't wear pocket watches, but there's a lot of diehard collectors that will still continue collecting these type of watches. Now, that's a piece of art in its own. Very Art Deco. This is probably 30s, if I had to guess. 5004 white, 5004, yeah, 5004 right. rose. No, not split seconds, 50, yeah. 50, 5270, I can't see. Uh, this, I love the fact that you have that. I mean, the 50-70s, you're yeah. missing a platinum. Well, the platinum, he just he just explained to us. Okay. 50, 70 so, so this came in a set of four. There was a platinum version. My favorite is actually this, the yellow gold. And the reason I like the yellow gold the best is because of the black dial. Well, this, 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 this was made for the Russian market, actually. And of course, right. it's a Tiffany & Co. Yeah. I'm happy to see earlier Erwicks in your collection because I think this is a brand that's on its way up. Now we have AP, Jorn, Brightly. And notice that in this collection, it's not just about a ticket item. It's not about how much something is, right? When you see, quote unquote, less expensive Panerai sitting out there, here versus, let's say, some of the Paddocks or Rolexes, doesn't mean anything because this gentleman buys what he likes. I'm going to go through my favorite yeah, brand, which cool. is AP, the Survivor, one of my favorite yeah, limited edition you. offshores, the IP with the platinum bezel. This is a limited edition of 20, uh, uh, Japan edition, titanium offshore, uh, white gold, Royal Oak. Uh, you, Jorns, right? And you know what I like? I like the fact that he has all the sportier Jorns because the, S, the sports line from Jorn is something like out of left field for them. And I think in the future, these are going to be pretty big collectibles because there's just not that many of them made. This was the first produced uh, yellow gold. gold watch from Panerai. They made it in white gold and they made it in yellow gold. This is the eight second radio mirror chronograph. Again, one of the earlier. I like the fact that you have all the early stuff. The first eight day power reserve is here. Uh, this was the black, black seal. seal. This is the first black seal. This is the one that has the submariner on uh, the submarine on a dial. Again, takes me back to my days. You know what else I love here? An Elaine Silberstein. You don't often see people have an Elaine Silberstein in their collection. It's a shame this guy didn't. I think this guy could have gotten a lot further than he did, but he was so ahead of his time that I think if, if he came out just 10 years ago, his watches would have been a humongous hit. I have one of his uh, clocks in my house. So considering the fact that this gentleman has never sold any watches that he's ever collected, me and Adrian decided to come over and try the impossible to see if we can try to trade him for something. And now it's very tough to wow somebody that pretty much has everything under the sun in every genre of watch collecting alone. But I think this might be something that he may say wow too. And maybe, maybe we can actually trade him out of something and actually leave this watch here. You ready for this? Do you know what this is? <laughs> Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Grand Comp. It just so happens it's on an extra, extra large strap. What a coincidence, right? But I want you to take a look at this. It's, a, it's their grand complication. It's a minute repeater, split second chronograph, perpetual calendar. Again, I don't want to give you a price. My question to you is, is are you willing or not to part with some of your watches? To, of course she's not. <laughs> of course she's not. This is why he's probably one of 10 collectors that I know that will not part with anything that he had. Little test, but our client is a true collector. As I said, he doesn't sell anything, and therefore the whole trade idea didn't really pan out. But who knows? Maybe he'll just buy the watch. So this is what's a thirty-five thousand dollar knife like looks like. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to talk about an hour of work? Uh, you know, months to manufacture one of these. Or I should say, handcraft one of these. I don't want to scratch it. Where is this yeah, going? No, I. Yeah, Which yeah. is the one? So this is the one that's a hundred thousand. This one. So this is a hundred thousand dollar knife it looks like. This looks like it came off a of material in Jupiter or something yeah. like that. What happens when one of these artists or knife makers dies? Do they just yeah, shoot through the roof? No. And sometimes Roman, yes. Sometimes no. Really? It's not like art? It, it's a weird world. The knife world. It's, it's weird. 
But this is this 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 is just. I'm, I'm, I've never seen anything like this in my life. So I've heard things about the collectible knife world. I've seen things about the collectible knife world. I never really firsthand seen the merchandise, if you will. And I didn't realize how amazing these true works of art could be and how expensive they can get. But any one of those knives that I was shown, I would love to have them, but the prices are very comparable to watches. We are BW Contemporary, my friend Donald. This is, we're gonna do a little small private show. We're gonna talk watches, we're gonna show watches, we're gonna try to sell a few watches, along with some kick-ass art. We have a black one back at the office. What does that go for? So a blue one goes, this, this particular one we're asking 55, a black one is about 45. Blue is always historically more money. Uh, I like the black one. I like the black one. But it's black with the, sub, with the silver sub dial. That's this is, the, this, this, this is the watch. This yeah. is the watch. Yeah, I love that watch. Yeah. 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 black tile. I don't like that blue. There you go. What I saw had all it was all black. Okay. Yes, yes. So does, it, does they have a lot of different iterations of it? So this is a very interesting situation. We have a gentleman here who came up to the booth looking for a black Royal Oak Chrono. Funny enough, the one that we actually have that's in service right now is already pre-sold to a buddy of mine, but I do know that I could probably, instead of selling him the all black one, sell him this 26331 ST and make two trade deals in one. So this was the first automatic concept that they made chronograph. Yeah, most other concepts were manual wine, except till they came out with that one. And the rotor is actually in the front. So this is not manual? This is not manual. This is the only concept that's not manual. This is the first concept they made that's an automatic. It's clear through there too. What's that? It's a skeleton. Yeah. It's a full blown skeleton. How do we do that? That one is uh, 50,000. 2021, 50,000. So two seconds later, the watch ended up on his wrist. I was going to say something, but I, I felt uncomfortable. But thank yeah. you for saying it. <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. She's a good age. She loves all them. I like her. All of a sudden, look who walked in. Judge Janine on Fox News. She's a badass lady. Nothing they're doing is making a damn bit of difference. Well, I want something with a like a, a, a turquoise face or, you know, one of the colored faces. Do you know what I mean? Like the yellow with a colored face. Yellow gold. Oh, yellow gold. I know exactly yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. You're yeah. looking for a day date. Yeah, here's day what date. Here's yes. what you're looking for. I don't. We don't have it in stock, but I can. I can find it for you pretty easily. Okay, I have to ask you for something. I need a picture with you for all my conservative friends back home. Do you mind? My pleasure. All right. Wait, what the hell? I'm not in this picture. My pleasure. See, so um, take a picture. So my what do you have? Is this in a forty? This is a thirty-six. My all right. Yeah. So they, they, they don't make this in a forty. So this is a thirty-six as well. Same case. This is thirty-six. Yes. Okay. This is a thirty-six, for example. <laughs> So what you're looking for is a 36 millimeter yellow gold yellow turquoise. Gold, yeah. 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 So this would be the same. Yeah. Same yeah. Size. This one's the one with the diamond. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely want Those the turquoise. Fine. I'll just, yeah. So do you get the turquoise? I can I can get it at any time. If you give me a price and what the year of the watch is. Yeah, I'll, I can get it for you new. If there's any way I can get in contact with you, your people, how can just you go uh, this? how can I get it new? That's what we do. Good. You let me know. I will. I will send you an email tomorrow with okay. all the details. Okay. All right. Thank all right. You. I'm Adrian. By the way, Adrian. Right. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Here you had Judge Janine telling me that when she went to Europe, she was looking for a very, very specific Rolex and she could not find it. Well, hopefully I could come to the rescue and lock it in for her. RM10 Titanium. RM10. It's actually a really nice touch on the orange strap. Yeah, you got one of the major ones. That, that's nice. That's well, like uh, so he, so he is that. He is your same one. Rose gold diamonds. This is cool, man. Very cool. You want to buy it? Do you want to sell it? Maybe. What do we have with it? Box so papers. Everything. I got everything. it at Manfredi's. Okay. Box papers. Everything. I can make an offer right now with the full set for eighty-five thousand. I get her. So here's a perfect negotiation with somebody. I think it's on eBay for hundred fifteen. I'd like to get a hundred. Hundred? He's not too far off from his asking price, and he had actually mentioned that he bought this watch at list 
when his local AD actually had Richard Mille. I think he ended up paying probably around $65,000 for that watch. So he got to wear it for about a decade and is still making money on it. I'm just interested, uh, when you were looking at it, what were you looking for? There wasn't even anything in particular. First of all, I always look at condition. Yeah. And because I buy how would you want? How would I assess it? Listen, it's it's a used watch, it's titanium. Titanium yeah. is a is a metal that's sensitive, right? So it scratches easy, it's not a big deal. I was looking for anything that's like stands out that's a problem, which I don't see. The glass, I would need a loop to check because obviously all the Rich Richard Mio glasses stick up, easily banged, easily but nothing really came to mind that's an issue for me condition wise. Look, what I what I can do if you want to strike a deal, it's easy transaction. Should you want to do? Well, I'll, I'll touch you. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out in the next uh, few weeks. How much is it? A million and a half. What? Which one? <laughs> this one. Here, you, wow. you can hold it. No, I'm not holding it. You drop it, you buy it. I'm not holding it. Wow. Oh my God. Skeleton. Wow. That's crazy. Here, your Snapchat is about to blow up. Yeah. Is that what you want, Snapchat? I have kids. I'm familiar with that. Is this all diamond? Crazy. I just like how the price of my house. Take it back, take it back. Can I hold that one? Sure. Oh, well, this one is like a secret. Look, watch. Ready? Uh, watch this. Watch art show. Oh, that's so cool. And then it just opens up. That's so cool. So, this is uh, once a year, what they do is they put out a high jewelry piece. They do one obs. Of course, some came with their children. And these two kids come up to my showcase and they're going absolutely bonkers over every watch, asking me for a price on like 100 watches, back and forth, back and forth. I love that. To me, that's a future collector. So let's talk about what he just bought. Every single meteorite dial is basically a piece unique on its own, right? It's a chunk of meteorite that Rolex uses in every one of their watches that are meteorites. So you're the proud owner of basically a piece unique. So congratulations. Thank you. Rolex literally uses a chunk of rock that they cut up and they put into their meteorite dial. So congratulations on this gentleman on his new purchase. And I would say overall, this trade show was very, very successful. A success to say the least. We're thinking about doing more of these. If we were to do a small pop-up show, something private, 30 to 50 people, would you guys come out? Let me know in the comments below.